In this video, I'm going to show you how to get Neo Geo Pocket Color up and running on the PS2 version of RetroArch. I'm a newcomer to the Neo Geo Pocket Color, but I'm so glad that I've started diving into this system. There's some really fun little SNK games on it, and it's just a really neat piece of hardware. And while it's fun to play on the original hardware, I have to admit that I do spend a lot of time playing these games through emulation just so I can play them on a bigger screen. And due to the relatively easy nature of this system to emulate, it makes a great candidate for PS2 and its limited CPU power. So today I'm going to show you how to get it set up to run on the PS2 version of RetroArch. Let's dive in. The first thing we need to do to get Neo Geo Pocket Color games up and running on the PS2 version of RetroArch is get RetroArch installed on our PS2. So I made a video tutorial on how to do that. This is a continuation of that guide, so please refer back to it if you need instructions on how to get RetroArch running on a PS2. But once you have the PS2 version of RetroArch installed, we're going to pop our USB stick into our computer and get it opened up if it doesn't automatically pop up. Now, as I've worked through this tutorial series, I made a folder named RetroArch ROMs on the root of my USB stick, and that is where I'm storing all of the games for this tutorial series. So you don't need to do that. You can store them wherever you want on this USB stick. I just like having them all gathered in one place. It makes it really simple. But anyways, the next thing we're going to need is Neo Geo Pocket Games, and you can dump these with a hardware dumper if you have a physical collection or resort to the shady parts of the net. I really don't care, but any requests for download links or things like that that are illegal are just going to be deleted, so just don't bother asking. I'm not going to do it, so just stop. But anyways, once you have games obtained, we just need to put them onto this USB stick, and I'm just popping them into that RetroArch ROMs folder. And there we go. But once you get your games copied over to the USB stick, we can close out everything on the computer and put it back into our PS2 and boot into RetroArch. Now, just as a quick reminder, again, this guide is a continuation of my original RetroArch install video for PS2, so please refer back to that video to get RetroArch onto your PS2. And if you're interested, you can see how to get a nice little RetroArch entry here for your free MC slash HD boot browser. But anyways, let's go ahead and launch into RetroArch. You can do so through Launch Elf or uh, the shortcut if you made one. And once RetroArch has finished booting, we can begin loading up content. So one method of doing so is to go down to load content, scroll down to mass, this is your USB thumb drives on a PS2, and then find the directory that you put your games. Again, I put mine in RetroArch ROMs and then Neo Geo Pocket Games. And then I could just select a game and it'll boot up. I personally don't like this method a whole lot. It's a couple of extra steps that we don't need. So what I like to do instead is go down to this little entry here that says playlists and then select import content. And from here, we're going to do a manual scan and the content directory is going to be our Neo Geo pocket games. So again, I had mine in RetroArch ROMs, Neo Geo pocket games, and I'm going to tell it to scan this directory. Now for system name, make sure content directory is selected. It will name it after the folder that you have your Neo Geo Pocket Games stored in. So make sure you have that folder named what you want it to show up as. And then for the default core, we're going to scroll down to the bottom here where it says SNK and choose Neo Geo Pocket Color Race. Make sure scan recursively is on if you have your game separated into subfolders. And for the PS2 version of RetroArch, I don't really recommend having things zipped. So just unzip them before you put them on the USB stick. But once you have the options set, go ahead and start the scan. And after the scan is completed, you'll have a new Neo Geo Pocket Games listing here. So again, if you're on the main menu, you can just click on Playlists and go right down to Neo Geo Pocket Games. And now we could begin loading up our game. So just select one and tell it to run. And there we go. Neo Geo Pocket Color Games up and running on a PS2. How awesome is this? Now, interestingly enough, Neo Geo Pocket Color is another one of those systems where the aspect ratio actually appears correctly on my setup. There's a number of cores that just don't look right on my setup through the GBSC, and honestly, I haven't really gone in to really fine-tune why that is the case, but Neo Geo Pocket Color looks good, and that makes me happy. Now, you will notice that there is some interlacing stuff going on. I believe that's because of the GBSC. If you have your PS2 hooked directly up to a CRT or something, it might not look like this, but... For the most part, graphics, audio, all look absolutely fantastic, and performance is really good, at least for the three games that I own. I don't have a lot of Neo Geo Pocket games, but the three I have work great, so it makes me happy. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the core options available to us within Race. Holding down the Start button on our controller for two seconds will bring us to the RetroArch Quick Menu. 
and from here go down to options. And there's really not a whole lot to work with here in Race. So first up we have language. You can choose between English or Japanese. And next we have a dark filter. So if there's games that are just blindingly bright, you can enable this up to 50% to try to lower that uh, brightness a bit, make it a little more bearable to look at. And that really covers it. Again, not a whole lot here. So once you have options set up the way you want, you can go ahead and go down to overrides and save them as a core override. So every time you load up a Neo Geo Pocket game, this is what will greet you. But that's really going to do it as far as Neo Geo Pocket Color is concerned. So as always, if you happen to have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. Not a whole lot to this one, so should be pretty easy. But now if you could all do me a huge favor and please be sure to hit that like or dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's video. And if you haven't done so already, be sure to hit that sub button so you can see when new videos like this or reviews or other random nonsense goes live. Really goes a long way to helping out the channel and I can't thank you all enough for that. If you'd like to further help support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little really goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and we are super grateful to all of you for that. Just thank you so much again to all of our current champions, you friggin' rock stars you. But that's going to do it for this one, so until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, stay awesome, and we will see you all back next video.